Hey y'all, welcome. Yeah, so to have an easy time in understanding this video, uh, you should watch my two videos on uh, the introduction to complex integrals and the evaluation theorem for complex integrals. I'll link both of those videos below this video. Um, in addition, I made several videos on the integration of z bar, the complex conjugate of z, along the same three contours, c1, c2, and c here. And so uh, it'll go a long way in your understanding of this video if you watch uh, those videos on the integration of z bar along the same three contours as here. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, first, the contours c1 and c2. Now, this here is in the complex plane, even though I haven't drawn the axes. And so uh, the contour C1 goes from the origin to 1 plus i. And it's not atypical uh, to write complex numbers in coordinate notation like this. And uh, C2 also goes from uh, the origin to 1 plus i, but through this blue root. Yeah? Okay, now, um, C is the contour that is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin in the complex plane, of course. And so it's given by the norm of z is equal to 1. Yeah? Okay, this contour c is given by the norm of z is equal to 1. And again, it's a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin in the complex plane. Okay, now to start, we know that this is true, which is the z is the derivative of z squared over 2. And we also know that contour integration is path independent, which means that uh, the integral over c1 uh, and the integral over c2 are going to be equal since c1 and c2 have the same starting and ending point. That is, we could first write that this is equal to this, and by the evaluation theorem, all we have to do is figure out what the integral of z dz is, which is z squared over 2, and evaluate at the endpoints 0 and 1 plus i. And when we do, we get this. And when we simplify this, we get simply i. Yeah, so that's to say that the contour integral over uh, c1, which is equal to the contour integral over c2, is equal to i for the function f of z is equal to z. Now, notice that f of z is equal to z is a polynomial. And so it is entire, right? Entire means that it is analytic everywhere, and analytic means uh, differentiable, right? Okay, and so then we know from the corollary at the end of uh, the video on the evaluation theorem that for a function that is analytic in a domain D, uh, the integral over any closed contour is equal to zero, right? And therefore, uh, the integral over the contour C is equal to zero. Now, this feels very cheap, like if it's your first time uh, looking at complex integration. But there in that video uh, on uh, the evaluation theorem, when we talked about the corollary at the end, I said how useful the corollary is in reducing uh, complex integration and simplifying the work that you have to do. So if you have a hard time believing that this is true, which is if you have a hard time buying that corollary, then let's do the laborious work um, of the sort that we did in the integration of z-bar to see that this is in fact true. Yeah, okay, to do that, uh, let's uh, note that uh, z is equal to e to the i theta if uh, r, the radius, is 1, right? So here we can say that z is equal to e to the i theta, right? All right, and then from there we see that dz is going to be, um, dz is going to be i times e to the i, and I should have highlighted this i in um, yellow, but we'll live, right? But yeah, dz is going to be i times e to the i theta times d theta. And that just follows naturally from what we claimed z is, right? Okay, okay. And so then, so then we could say that um, the integral uh, over the contour c of z dz turns into first the integral, the integrand, sorry, this integrand first changes into this, and that's just z dz uh, as we've claimed it here. And since uh, theta is our parameter here, and theta ranges from 0 to 2 pi to go all the way around the circle, we see that the contour c can be thought of as going from 0 to uh, 2 pi in terms of theta, right? Okay, all right. And then now, uh, first, we can factor out the i, right? And then e to the i theta times e to the i theta, once we've factored out this i, is going to be e to the 2i theta. And so showing that step, we could write this. And now integrating this is uh, like integrating uh, functions of real variable, which is that um, 2i is a constant. Otherwise, uh, we know that uh, the integral of e to the 2i theta is going to be e to the 2i theta divided by 2i. And of course, this i here we have to keep in front. And then we evaluate um, 
at zero and two pi, right? And we know how to evaluate uh, both from um, calculus of real variables and from the evaluation theorem uh, that uh, we saw. Uh, and so um, for complex uh, integrals, and so this is what we'd write, right? And what I did here, like to go from here to here is clearly uh, cancel uh, this and this, right? Like the I there and the I there. And so I'd get this and then I'd evaluate here, right? And when we evaluate, look at what we'd get. Uh, we'd get this, right? Um, and each of the zeros clearly one. But uh, for each of the four pi I, remember each of the I theta, is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta. I made a video on that proving why e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta a while back, and I'll link that video below this video. But yeah, using that interpretation, um, the fact that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta, uh, we could write, um, first I just simplified e to the zero as just being one as it is and use the common denominator too. But yeah, we could interpret this uh, from that uh, Euler identity as cosine 4 pi plus i times sine 4 pi, and that's uh, e to the 4 pi i or e to the i times 4 pi. That's this here, right? Okay, now what's cosine of 4 pi? Well, cosine of 4 pi should be the same as cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. And then sine of 4 pi should be same as sine of 2 pi, which is 0. And so then we see that the numerator reduces very nicely to 1 plus i times 0 minus 1. And so we get 1 plus 0 minus 1 uh, in the numerator. And of course, we still have divided by 2. But who cares because the numerator is 0. And so we get 0. This is the hard way uh, to do uh, this closed integral. The simple way to do it is to use the corollary at the end of the video on the evaluation theorem and you'd be done. Yeah, all right, and I hope now you realize why that corollary is so important. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Lots more to come, and keep watching. Take care.